Perfect. Okay. Let us go ahead and get ourselves started with session 18. Today we're going to do some stuff that is really very fresh because what I wanted to do is actually work through some of the uh, helpful tips that will hopefully help you address what you need to do for the final assignment. Uh, just sort of based on uh, working with Jenna a little bit yesterday during office hours and sort of seeing uh, where things are confusing and where some different like bridges need to be built to help you kind of understand how to access some of the information we're asking for. You know, we sort of adapted the examples kind of based on that. So you're going to get some very fresh stuff today that hopefully will help you uh, out in the right direction. Let me, as we get started, though, look at kind of the assignment description again ever so briefly so we can just sort of set the stage for what we're up to today. So if we go on over to the assignment description and take a look, you will see that the idea is, what we're going to try and do is come up with some different forms, some different sort of tower forms that would meet a certain architectural requirement <coughs> about a certain number of feet. Um, you have a lot of flexibility about how you could deliver on that total number of square feet. And the idea is you're going to sort of propose a lot of different examples of how you might achieve that. And then we're going to go through and compare um, those different potential ways of achieving that amount of square footage and just based on a number of different metrics. So again, this is for San Francisco, um, you know, it's a pretty large site to work with, up to 300 by 450, which is actually pretty large and a height limit of 750, which depending on how you're dividing it up is going to give you a 50 or 60 story tower if you want it to be that big. And ultimately, what you're trying to achieve is a square footage somewhere between 12, uh, 1 million two and 1 million five. Okay, so you have a pretty wide area to play around with. And the idea is you want to evaluate some alternative scenarios, um, things where we can have some different tower forms and kind of twist them or push them around, reshape them parametrically, okay, and then evaluate really what the outputs are for those different things. And you can do that either automatically or manually. If you want to set it up as a list map to kind of march through with a bunch of alternatives, super. If you really want to try wildly different forms, that's OK, too. You know, you can sort of just uh, go all over the place in terms of coming up with some uh, different forms to take a look at and consider. But the idea is, on Tuesday, you're going to go through and recommend three of them that you think are your top alternatives and whichever one you think is the best, based on whatever rationale you want to use. So it's pretty open-ended about how you want to do this. But let's talk about how you can approach it. In terms of how we want you to evaluate these things, there's some very basic things like the building height, the total building volume, and total floor area that we want you to report. And that's pretty easy. If you have a mass family, if you have some sort of mass out there and you've divided up into levels, you know, you'll get all that stuff. That's actually pretty straightforward. This is probably going to be one of your input parameters for the building height, but the building volume and the total floor area will probably just be reported out based on your form. Now, we'll take a look at today about the difference between doing it as a mass family versus doing it as an in-place mass. A mass family will generally be a better way to do it because it'll give you the more flexibility in terms of manipulating things around. But you could also go through and do this by uh, kind of creating a form mathematically and generating out a dynamo and kind of twisting it that way. So we're going to look at how you can either generate a mass family, create a mass family and add parameters to it and deform that. Yeah, or you could look at it mathematically and draw some curves and loft them together and kind of create something like that. Either way will work. Okay. In terms of really thinking about, oh, some of the performance metrics, we'll take a look at today how we can compute the energy use for a building form by using the conceptual energy modeling tool. Okay. Solar insulation, we talked about that before in terms of you played with that a little bit before. If we have the different surfaces of that, you can go through and come up with some notion of what the total insulation that's available kind of on that panel or on that different surfaces are. Okay. Open space preserved on site, you can almost compute that as you have your base footprint area, you have the total area of being uh, 300 by 450 or something like that, and just subtracting it. Okay, so some pretty basic things. <coughs> These economic ones get a little bit tricky, and that's why I have to put together this uh, kind of fresh example. <laughs> The idea is that you're going to have this variable construction cost running from the top to the bottom, and also a variable kind of sales revenue. So this gets into that whole issue. You actually want to know how much floor area is at each level. And there are a couple little tricks to how to make that happen, but I'll show you how to beat that one. Okay. 
So, that's the idea of where we're going today, but let's go ahead and kind of start out oh, by just opening up some of uh, our, the example, 18.1, and see if we can kind of like uh, plow through this and kind of get some guidance. So, I'm going to go on out there to 18, I'm going to open up 18.1, evaluating tower metrics, <laughs> and let's see what I have here. Right now, I'm just looking at the elevations in the, uh, or showing the different levels that are available. I wanted to go through and create enough levels to be as tall as my tower might be, so this file has a bunch of different levels. Um, the levels that will be used only depend on uh, what your form intersects with. So if you only go up 40 floors, it'll only report that. The other levels will report just no area, no area up there. Okay, but make sure you have enough levels to kind of, yeah, uh, include everything you want. Okay. Then I sort of threw on that my twisting tower shape, which is actually very squatty right now. Let me go ahead and make that a little bit taller. Check what's going on. But we could really use any of these different forms. So again, you could use twisting tower, you could use twisting rectangle, you could just use box, you could any of those forms. Those are all sort of family that are available. Let's talk about how you gotta get create your own form. Let me just pop this up. What you're going to see is I have the mass floors turned on, so it is going through and reporting. And see all those little green guys in there? That's almost a little too strange looking right now, so let me kind of make, oh, top radius is 60, mid radius is 300. That doesn't look very good. I'm going to make it like 80. A little bit easier to see what's going on here. This shape, just so you know, this was the result of, if you try to optimize for the surface area of, uh, versus volume, or surface versus floor area, you tend to get these very round shapes, which is kind of what you expect. Okay, so there's a shape that's a little twisting tower one, and it's available. So the idea is that any of these things are parameters that are available to change. This is actually sort of a complex object that's actually made of three different profiles, one, two, three, base, mid, and top, and they're all rotated a certain distance, and that actually gets complicated. Going through and sort of adapting the parameters for the different profiles, that's pretty easy. Rotation is where the hard thing always comes in rather. It's a little bit tricky to rotate things, okay? But we'll play around and show you how to do that. But the idea is out of this tower, you want to go through and report some different things. So we can go through and report the gross floor area, the gross surface area, the gross volume, any of those things are available. Okay. Based upon all sorts of different things, we can sort of figure out what the floor area, the lowest one is, and say, great, let's subtract that out to be the open side area. Okay. The tricky part of this is sort of the whole issue of, oh, if we have different floor areas, kind of at each of those different levels, reporting all those so we can associate a cost with each of those. Okay, so that's what got me started going in terms of like trying to put together a different example. So you'll see this has a floor area of like 12727. This one up here has a floor area of 7757. But the idea is that this lower floor area is going to be both relatively cheap to build and relatively less valuable as we sell it. It's going to be a more expensive floor to build okay. and uh, also more valuable to us. So we put together a little bit of infrastructure for uh, kind of evaluating that, and that's all kind of hanging around in kind of some Dynamo scripting. But before we get there, let's talk about this family thing and really how you do these families. <laughs> because, oh, these families can be created a number of different ways. Where I started with Jeff yesterday is she had actually gone through and done these as in-place masses. Okay, so if you're creating an in-place mass, let me just kind of show you what that's like. We'll be able to kind of work with it, but I'm going to basically recommend converting it. If you want to create masses that aren't so parametric, they are just shapes that are pretty much out there um, for you to evaluate as you create them, we can create an in-place mass. 
in place masses will look something like this. I'll go through and just draw some sort of profile down on the ground. I'll put some other profile higher up if I want to do it as a kind of blend of two different profiles. If I just made a form out of a single profile, it would make a straight up rectangular tower. Okay. If you want to have it vary a little bit, you need two different profiles. So let me put another one above it. For where I want to put that, I can choose the height. I can change this later, but let me go and put it up. Oh, I'll put it at level 25 right now. I'll go through and put this other profile here. Go back to 3D. Oops, I am in 3D. But I'll take those two profiles and I'll loft them together by saying, oops, let me control shift to get that. Create a form. And that's a perfectly valid way to do this. So if you've gone through and created some like this, not to worry. If we do go through and create things like this, the hard things are, you know, we have like dimensions over here. That's pretty good. But if I choose that dimension, let me try that again. The tricky part is whether we can sort of vary it parametrically and how much we can. The in-place masses, I guess I can sort of play around with that somewhat parametrically. They're not very reusable. So if I want to create four or five different instances that all have different variations on the height, that won't work because they're all really one thing. Okay, so you know what I prefer to do is, as opposed to doing it in here, is actually make that a family that I can place multiple instances of, okay, and change the parameters for each of them. But if I say finish the mass, there's the mass. And if I want to divide it into mass floors, I can do that. Okay. But if you don't want to tweak it very much, if you want to just manually do this, that's a perfectly valid form. We could get all the floor areas, do the EUI on it, all those sorts of things. Okay. If you prefer to go out making this just a little bit more parametric so you can kind of flex it automatically, let's approach it slightly differently. Okay. The idea is we're going to do something very, very similar, but we're going to do it in a mass family as opposed to an in-place mass. And that is actually fairly straightforward. What you do is you say that you want to say new. You can say either family and go to conceptual mass, or this just takes you there kind of a little quicker. Conceptual mass. Let's do this. If you've had the experience, oh, you either here or in 120A, kind of putting parametric or reference planes down and kind of attaching things to them. It's that same basic procedure. We did that in oh, so the A class. Sometimes we do that to go and create parametric furniture or to adapt to different things. It's going to be the same basic operation. <coughs> Here's how it's going to work. So again, I'm going to go over and say that I want a new conceptual mass. So over here, I'll say new conceptual mass and choose that mass family. It takes me to this special environment where I can define things. This is actually the same sort of environment where all the different parts, the furniture, you know, anything that we sort of load in as a family is available in here. And this environment works very similarly. So what we can do is we can draw a profile down here on the bottom. That's super. If I would just choose that and extrude that, it'll be kind of a straight rectangle going up. Okay, if I want to put two different profiles in there, then I can loft them together. I'll have to go ahead and put them at a two different heights. Okay, not type stuff. But let's talk about giving yourself a little parametric control here. Because what you tend to like to do is add some parameters. So here's that box. That box is kind of doing A okay, but if I'd like to be able to resize that box, what I'd like to do is put some dimensions on here. I can put dimensions on just between the different profiles, and that will work. Um, then as I resize it, 
it will reside, but I won't have much control of where it is over the center line or compared to the center line. So, uh, or center point. The better way to do it, though, is to go through and define some reference planes like this. And this will look sort of very familiar to people who have seen me do this in some other classes. We'll go through and say, oh, in here, where do I, where are my dimensions? I'll do a dimension from here to here. This will be the total width. But what I'm going to do is say, let me go through and make sure those two things are centered by putting that equality constraint on there. So I'll put an equality constraint. That's just going to make sure those lines on the left and right, up and bottom sides, are always centered around that as the center point. So again, what I did was I drew some reference planes okay, on the top and bottom. And then I just put some constraints on there to go through and make sure that they stay centered. After that, I'm going to go through and just add a dimension to this. And add a dimension to that. So now I have the ability to push these lines around. And if I shrink their height or if I shrink their width, um, they're always going to stay centered around that point. Okay, so this is how we create a lot of different parametric objects. If I want to give them parameter names, I'll just say, let's add a parameter to that. I'll call that my base width. I'll make it an instance parameter, because I'd like to be able to change it tower for tower. And I'll call that one over here my base depth. Super. Mm. What's that? Gonna make that an instance. Oh, very good. Thank you. Edit that. Thank you. Okay. This, in terms of what I put together so far, will give me the ability just to flex it a little bit. So great, I can say, oh, I want to move those lines around and be 180 by 250. move those things around. It's interesting. You might notice that that uh, profile is actually moving relative to them. It sort of did start changing. It has some weird relationship. We're not quite sure what it is. But the better way to kind of really make sure it controls it is we'll use the align tool. And what we're going to do is just lock the sides of the profile. Do this. Super. And now when I go through and I change those, it should actually go through and change the size of the profile. Excellent. Now, having a profile that's resizable is pretty groovy, but that still doesn't look like it's like a building. So what I need to do is take that profile and kind of stretch it up. Now, I can do this in a couple of different ways. I could just take that single profile and stretch it up if I want a perfectly rectangular tower. If I want to be more pyramid-like or give myself the ability to flex it that way, what I should do is add another plane at a higher level and draw some separate profile up there and give myself some control on that. And that's what we'll do next. OK, so Sorry, yes. how did you set the, like the variable type for the with a reference plane? Oh, you jumped out. Yeah. Okay. So what you do is go on over to that floor level. Okay. And after you've sort of drawn the reference planes, two important dimensions to put on there. One is under create. The one that goes across one, two, three, and says equal, that just keeps it centered. The other one just comes across. And then how you actually make that a variable, if you want to make that a parameter that's changeable, is you choose the dimension, and then you add a label to it. 
As soon as you add a label to any dimension, what it does is it puts it up here in the properties dialog so you can change it. So, not too off with that. So go ahead and see if you can get one of those. We're going to do basically the same thing up higher, so don't worry if you're falling off a little. We'll do another one. Okay, to create that <coughs> second level, what I probably should do is go over to one of the uh, elevations, because what I want to do is create another plane for myself. So I'm going to create a plane that's just going to indicate the height of the tower. Okay. Well, we're hanging around out here, we might as well put a dimension on this so we can control the tower height. So I uh, will say, hey, let's go ahead and give you a dimension too. From base level to there. Okay, this is going to be, oh, let's go ahead and call it just tower height. In the instance. Okay, every time you add one of these, it is a good idea to flex these just to make sure. That's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is go to the upper level again, and on tower height level, we're going to go through and draw some more profiles there. So you're really creating a hierarchy of these little parametric dependencies. So this is drawn at level one, at tower height. The next profile, it'll have its own dimension. So there's this kind of string of uh, different hierarchical relationships. I can go back to level one if I want to look at it straight on. I'll say, let's draw some reference planes. Now, reference planes, it actually doesn't matter. When you draw the profile, then you have to draw it at the level. Reference planes going to go all the way up from uh, top to bottom. So if I want to draw some more reference planes, for example, I'll just put some in here. This is going to be the reference planes that are going to determine the top of the tower. So, same basic operation. We're going to go through and put some uh, dimensions on that give us the equality, if it's centered. If I want that, I might not want that. I might want it to all kind of go up towards one side. Okay. And this will be now, I'll call that top depth. And I'll call that top width. So I'll say, let's go ahead and have a little bit of add a parameter. Are those not on the first floor? Oh. It's, it, the reference planes actually go all the way up. Uh, so they don't matter. The reference planes will stretch. When I draw the profile, I'll put it up top. Uh, they're planes. They're yeah, they're just planes. They just go all the way up. OK, so good question, though. Because it really is, actually, that's top depth, isn't it? Actually, which one am I choosing? I think that's depth. OK, right there. And over here is top width. <coughs> Super. OK, now I got all these different planes, and I can even go through and change those top width and those top uh, depth ones to 100 by 80 or something like that. Make sure they move. Beautiful. So what I want to do is I want to draw a profile, but this is the critical part. You want to make sure it's not on the level one plane. You want to make sure it's at the top plane. So I'll draw a profile. And check out this very important dialogue right there. Actually, it's interesting. It's not allowing me to give it just yet, and I'll tell you why. I, I neglected a very important step. When I made that top plane, even though I gave it this dimension to say tower height, I didn't name it. So I need to name the plane so I can get at it. Okay, so let's go back over here. I'll go to the uh, elevations. I'll take that plane. That's a new thing over here. We never used to be able to do that. They have that little click to name it thing right there, which I think is really kind of cool. 
So we'll go right here. This is going to be the tower top plane. Okay, now when I go back, since it has a name, it is there. So I can draw this. And once again, link it all or uh, align it to get it all tied up. So I'll align here to here. I'll pull that over. So let's look at this in 3D. Don't worry if you've fallen off. We'll go through and kind of put this out there so you can grab onto it again. We now have a profile down here. We have a profile up there at those two different levels. Theoretically, if I flip anything around, the profiles will change. So if I say, great, now the tower height is actually going to be 250. Let's see if my profile moves up. It looks like it moved up. If I change the profile, oh, the top width to be 50, and the top depth to be 200, again, you'll get sort of the funny shape you want. Great. So we got these two profiles. They're looking pretty good. I take this profile, and I take that profile. I'm going to control to get them both, and say, create a form. And now I have this tower shape. So if the base depth is 100, I will invert <coughs> pyramid shape. Actually, if I think about it, I'll think of a building that actually has that shape. <coughs> but that's how we basically go out and create these building forms. And the trick is, or where the big variation is, as opposed to the in-place ones, which don't give us any ability to change anything, these now have the ability to flex them pretty easily. So if you're going to be flexing a whole bunch of different heights or widths or something like that, going through and making these is very valuable. If you're just going to be testing different things you know, that are approximately, just to kind of widely check, check out different variations, in-place masses will work too. So, let me click say OK there. Now, I got my beautiful little like uh, tower mass here. So, what is this? I just call it my pyramid mass, something like that. And if you want to go through and save that and use that, what you do is you save as. It's going to be a family. I'll put it out there. This is going to be my pyramid mess. Put it out there. Okay. I can also load it into my project and use it so I can load it in. Wants to know where to put it. Oh, it doesn't want to put it in this level. Yeah, I'll do it out in 3D. That's the one that I created manually. Let's go ahead and put this one in. Okay, so we're kind of back in the same spot. The difference is this one over here has the ability to flex all those things, and this one doesn't. Although, all the same information will be true on it. So this all starts with creating some forms that you can start flexing. And again, either flex manually or flex with list maps. So oh, everything from a kind of very pyramid-like pyramid to uh, something that's a little bit wider. Where this again gets tricky is when you actually go through and you try to twist things. We can talk about that just ever so briefly. Because rotating things is actually sort of a hard thing only in that you might notice that when I'm putting all those little reference planes in, they're kind of square. And I'm using all these kind of squared out relationships to sort of determine like how things all line up. So it gets a little gronky when you go through and twist things, OK? Because things don't stay quite so square. So when we do that, we actually use kind of a two-level kind of way of doing it. 
what we'll do is we typically draw kind of a profile kind of squarish, but then we'll put it in to a higher level object and rotate the profile, the squared profile, kind of relative to that axis. And that's actually what happens like in the twisting tower and also I think in the, my little twisting rectangular tower. It's both the same. But let me kind of address that. Although, let me do this. Just for people who want to play with this one, let's go ahead and put that guy up. We'll say files. Session 18. I'll just upload my little pyramid mass. Anyone wants to kind of play around with that? And here's the real advantage, is that you know by making things families, we can do this. You can make your families, share them with me, vice versa. We can put them out there in the libraries and everyone can kind of play. So if you want to work with uh, the twisting triangle or any of those masses, go for it. Or box, cone, cylinder, there's a bunch of them out there. Just so you know, in terms of what's available out here, you don't have to create everything from scratch. So if you wanted to go through and work with kind of a standard mass shape and just try deforming it, you have arches, barrel vaults, boxes, cones, cylinders, domes, blended rectangles. That's kind of like what we just did right now, a sphere. So there's a bunch of shapes out there for you. So don't feel like you have to reinvent everything from scratch. Or you can take one of these, open it up, and use it as a, you know, a, a way of just learning. You, know, you can sort of debug how they did it and see if there's uh, some way that you can do it too. Tripods. Okay, so for example, if I open the cone shape or something like that, let's take a look at how it's done. I'll just say, uh, that's just its parameters. Let me put one out there, see if I can actually oh, edit the family. What do we have available? Okay, I can make a 200 foot tall one. If I edit that family, let's see how it's defined. What do we got here? Looks like I have two parts to it over there. Let me go to the floor plan view, see if I can find some dimensions on this thing. Looks like we have some radius dimensions. These radius dimensions are then basically pulling out these reference planes. Okay, I think what's happening then is there's basically a circle sticking to those intersection points. If I was betting on it, that is probably locked in to the center point and to that outer point out here. Okay, if I go to the elevations, chances are in one of the elevations views, You'll see they've done the same sort of thing here. They have going up to the height and then a dimension driving that. So that's why that stretches up or down. Now, twisting tower, just in case you want to get into that, but I don't mean to oh, emphasize it too much. But if you are thinking about twisting, because yeah, you don't have to, just give you the warning of how that works. If you go through here and you say you want to twist something, we'll say edit the family. I'll show you how this works. Look at it in 3D. You'll see that I have, oh, a top height and a medium height, and it's really just three different things lofted together. But you might want to say, well, uh, hey, where are all the dimensions that are driving this thing? Because if you go through and choose, that thing up there, you don't actually see the dimensions. Although you do see some sort of parameters in here. And what's happening is there's actually something called a profile that is being brought in and rotated. So if you go to the profile, which is another family buried inside of this, okay, 
That is just a series of lines. So if I look at that, that's really just a bunch of lines. These lines have some dimensions that are ultimately sort of determining what's going on. But the idea is I wanted this profile to be kind of holding the shape around kind of that point, but then I wanted to be able to rotate it around uh, to whatever orientation I wanted to have in the bigger family. So I have this funny little uh, kind of triangular thing drawn that's then going to go and give me the ability to kind of connect those points. That's just sort of a profile. Let me kind of show it with a simpler profile. Let's see what actually this one is. I'm trying to remember if I had a special family or if this is just a generic shape. It's just a mass. Okay. If you want to create your own, look at this up. Here a second. Yep, it's just that. Okay. If you want to create your own profile, it's really easy. What you can do is, in the same sense, just like we just did, it's just this rough shape. Again, a profile is just going to be a series of <coughs> lines. So if you go through and, again, draw some reference planes or something like that, whatever it is that's going to determine your profile. Let's try this, just uh, experiment with the profiles for a second. I'll again center these. Looks like I blew it on that one. Try it again. One, two, three, equal. Okay, then we have the actual width. One, two, three equals. Then I'll have the actual depth. Okay. This is going to be profile width. This part over here is going to be profile depth. wrong. Something's wrong. Oh, I'll tell you why. It's, it's, it's considering a reporting parameter. Over here, I don't have it say equals. <coughs> That's what's going on. Because I put two different parameters on the same thing, um, the second one's considered a reporting parameter. It's not actually something that's allowing me to change it. I knew I was in trouble because it didn't have that little instance thing right there. It was grayed out, so something wasn't as expected. Okay, so I got these. These will flex around just the way I thought they would before. But if I want to use a profile, all I'm going to do is draw those lines those lines that I drew before, but let's draw some lines a little bit differently. I'll go from that intersection to that intersection to that intersection. That'd be like just doing this kind of very straightforward triangle. Go back to the center point. Like a I'll try that start, next. Negative Star Trek symbol. <laughs> we'll try that next. So this one, so let's see if we can get this to sort of stick. If the depth were 120, Okay, not too bad. If the width were 200, got a little arrowhead now. So, in keeping with the request, let's see if I can get that one out. Ah! Not that. No. <laughs> exactly, that wasn't right. How about that one? <coughs> okay, that's a little better. Let's go through, I'm just gonna stretch that to make sure it understands that I really am grabbing the intersection. Okay, so for Starfleet headquarters, <laughs> we're gonna do this. And let's see if that's gonna work. Excellent. Oh, yes. Okay, okay, so 
We'll say, okay, this is looking pretty good. You like this thing. You want to use it as one of your profiles and maybe have two of them at different levels and all that kind of stuff. Not to worry. What you're going to do is save as. Is this one set up to rotate though? What it is is for this, leave it the way it is. We'll handle the rotation at the higher level. Okay. Okay, so leave this guy alone, and then we'll see if we can make it rotate. Okay, this is going to be my uh, Starfleet kind of profile. So the angle in that like little well, guitar pick one, that was to determine the angle of yes within it. That wasn't the angle that you. That wasn't the outside right? angle. That was just the inside angle. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so. We got this, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and create another kind of conceptual mess. Just making masses all over the place today. Okay, I got my floor, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and I will oh, put the elevation for the tower height in here too, because I need that. Let me go through and, oh, reference plane. Over here, because so I'm going to put two of them at two different levels or more. Little tower height in here. Oops, no. It's actually tower top plane, but it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, click that if I want to get that quickly. Say that is the tower height. Nice instance parameter there. Okay, you are ready now to bring in the uh, emblem. So we'll go through and we'll say insert this thing, load a family. Let's see if I can find it. Just insert it. Let me place the component right there. Here it is. Now here's the deal. As you bring it on in there, it actually does have a center point. You can lock it right to that point if you want to. Okay. You would like to be able to deform this thing though. You're saying, well, hey, okay. I got that. I'd sort of like to be able to kind of make that bigger and smaller, but how am I going to do that? Because the profile has a depth and width, okay, but the tower has a depth and width. I'd like to sort of, you know, make, give myself the ability to change these for the bottom versus the top. Okay, so here's how it works. In fact, even if you want to, let's go through and do the other one. Now, we'll do this one first. Okay, we'll say, great, this guy's hanging around down here. It's got these different parameters. <coughs> these are the parameters of the sub-object. If you'd like to pass the parameters up, this is kind of like what we did when we made that little shade that poked out from the window. We had to pass, pass the parameter up so that we could uh, uh, change it as part of the tower. What we do is we add a parameter to this. So my parameter profile width here is going to be added to a parameter called Tower base width. Okay, we'll make that an instance parameter. The other parameter that I want to add in here is over here, I'll put a little equals in there. That's going to be tower base kind of depth. Again, what is this doing? This is giving me the ability to, as part of the tower, change these and have it then drive the profile. So 200, <coughs> okay, it should do whatever it's doing. Okay, not too awfully bad. Okay, what I would like to do is put another one of these profiles up high and then if we get really wild and crazy, put a little rotation on it. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. What I'm going to do is, oh, i got to host it. Let me kind of think about this in terms of where it's hosted. It's work plane is level one. Okay, I think when I put it out, it's going to end up on the work plane. What so, do you mean by host it? Oh, 
it basically it lives on something. Right now, this profile lives on level one. It's hosted. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what I want to do is actually change the host to be this upper plane. So, so when I put the one, yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's that hierarchy of relationships. So to do that, what I can do is I can say set the work plane to tower top plane. You can even show it if you want to. It's up there now. So now if I place something there, it'll be at that level as opposed to the lower level. So super. Let's go over here. I'm going to place my component. I could even say placement plane right here, just to make sure. Ooh, now this would be an interesting tower. I can't even really picture how they're going to draw that form. <laughs> <laughs> you have little faith. OK, let's go through and over here. And we'll say this is going to be tower top. Depth, I give depth. Instance. Okay. And then finally, tower top width. So you can see me crash and burn in a second here, right? Tower top width. Say okay. Beauty. Okay. So, if we want to try and make some sort of form out of that, Cross your fingers. I have no idea. We'll see. <laughs> is it oh. each other? It, in this case, it's considered self-intersecting. OK, if I line them up the other way, it'll work. Because in this case, what's going to happen is it tries to line them. This just means it, just, it don't know what to do. It's <laughs> basically what it's telling you. OK, so. If we rotate it just a little bit, will it line up, though? Because then you won't have the crossover. Let's try, you let's like try your that? theory. Let me, I'm going to rotate it. The whole way, and then you can rotate. Yeah, I'm going to rotate it the full way, then we'll rotate it off a little bit. Okay, so let me take this guy. And, oh, uh, where's my little rotate guy? There it is. It's just sort of hiding for me, looking small. So I'm just going to rotate it 190, 180 degrees. Okay, this is theoretically the easy case. Okay. That's not too bad. There's one path, <laughs> that's one fast building. Yeah. It's a pretty airport. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay. Now before we crash and burn completely, I should probably save as just because <laughs> you know you're never quite sure when these things are gonna crash on you. Okay, it's gonna be my Starfleet building. <laughs> Okay, again, we'll just test the little things. We'll say, great, let's go ahead and make it higher. We'll make it 200 feet tall. Super. If we go through and change, oh, the base width to 400. Okay, not too awfully bad. Changing things pretty radically in terms of what's there. Okay, but now let's go for the, the big, uh, <laughs> the one that never quite works right, but we'll see if we can make it work. It's the whole idea of a rotation. Okay, and let's see if we can make this work. Okay, I'm going to come back over to the top. The idea behind rotation is, or where rotation sort of has trouble or doesn't have trouble, is it's this whole notion of, oh, what is it? It basically works on the idea of a reference line as opposed to a reference plane. So what we're going to try and do is actually draw a line that we can rotate around, and then we're going to place the upper profile in the plane of the line, not in the plane at the top there. We want to basically sort of have it basically attached to something that moves so that when it moves, if the line moves, it sort of takes the same <coughs> relative orientation to it. It just sort of stays lined up to it. If that, that was a really weird way of explaining it, but let's see if we can actually make it happen. Okay, and to do that, here's what we'll do. We will go through and we'll take a reference line, 
okay? I'm gonna put it, this reference line, again, there's a hierarchy of things here. I don't wanna put it on level one. I wanna put the reference line of the tower top plane so that when I attach the profile to the reference lines plane, it'll still kind of be at that level. So it's a hierarchy thing. The line will be at tower top plane. The profile will be at line. So they're gonna to work together. Or at least that's the theory behind all this. So let's try this. I'm going to draw myself a line from here. I'll just kind of put it out there. That's my little reference line. See how it looks? Let's go ahead and try putting a uh, little controller on that to let us change its dimension. Right there. How can you know the line is on the right plane? That I know because when I placed it, well actually, even, let's see what it says over here in the profiles. It's on tower top plane. Okay, so when I was placing the line, what I had to do is make sure that the placement plane was that plane. Okay, so let's see if we can make this work. Okay, so we are gonna take that line now, I'm not 100% certain that that line is locked to that point. Since I sort of was on the point when I started drawing it, you like to think it's assumed to be there, but it may not be. I may have to go back and do a little aligning to make sure. But let's try rotating and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna call this, oops, not 45, not there. Ah, stop that. Stay put. That I'm going to go through and add a parameter to. What's interesting, now it was the solid already. Let me undo that again. It rotated. But you didn't even like yeah. tell the building form to, to respond to that. You just changed the parameter. You just turned it into a parameter. Oh, does it reset though to its un 180 whenever you change anything? No, it should be. It's interesting. I don't I'm not sure why it is going through and kind of grabbing that relationship. It might be it's because it's sort of close to what's happening down over here. That's, now it's very interesting to me. I don't think it should actually be doing that, but we'll sort of figure that out. Now, yeah, let's try this again. We'll just let that be for a minute. Okay, so we'll say, and we'll, we'll basically lock these two different profiles back into the orientation that they think they need. Okay, so we'll say add up here, we'll say top rotation. Okay. Now, before we panic, let's try this. Let's go through and say, what happens if I change my top rotation? If I change my top rotation to like 30 degrees, see if we can get that line to swing. <laughs> oh. Oh, did it connect? Are those the connecting lines that we're seeing? It's interesting. What it's swinging is, yeah, it's basically, it's, I'm dimensioning to the wrong thing. I think what I'm dimensioning to is actually <laughs> It's basically the, the reference line on the profile as opposed to that. That is very strange. Okay, well, let's cancel that. We'll undo that. We'll try that again. I think that my problem is just where this thing is connected. Oh, you better go back yeah. to your building performance. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Because what I want to do is not dimension to wherever that is dimensioning to in a mysterious way. What I want to dimension to is, okay, ah, watch out for this. See how it says mass Starfleet profile, Starfleet right. profile reference. That's where I'm going wrong. Yep. It's grabbing the wrong thing. What I oh. wanted to do is, there, the reference plane center front back. How do you do that? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's way down here at the bottom. It sort of tells you what you're grabbing. So, let's see now. Unexpected consequence, but it's kind of interesting. 
Okay, again, oops, I already have top rotation done, or maybe not, I undid it, so. Thank you. Okay, so let's see now if we can get that line to rotate around a little bit. Okay, let's say if it's 30 degrees. Okay, let's say if it's 20 degrees. Okay, that line's doing what I think it should be doing. Okay, so given that we have that line that we want it to be doing, what I want to do is basically get that top profile, that top profile, and then like uh, switch around. Edwin, let me do this. Seems like you might want to go to the, the center line though, because what you'd like is you'd like zero to be there lined up. That would probably be a good idea, because that would be fine. Let me do this. I'm going to go through in this. I'm going to do something called dissolving it, which is just getting back to the profiles. Okay? And per your suggestion, I think that might make sense. So if we do it based on the zero, then it'll be plus or minus off of that instead. So let's see if we can sort of just move that dimension. Um, I don't see if you can move the witness line, but I can if you can. If not, no worries. <sighs> ah, stop that. I'm doing the wrong thing all the time. Okay, come back over here. Create a little uh, angular dimension. Again, let's make sure not the star free profile, re profile reference, the left right reference. Okay, and now we'll add that to it. Okay, let's try that. So if I made that more on the order of... <coughs> let's give it a 10 degrees. Okay, looking pretty good. Okay, so now we're down to our task <coughs> is to get that thing to sort of sit on this plane instead. Okay, and let's see if we can make it happen. You'll notice that thing actually does have a reference plane to it, and this is the trick of how to get that thing to it. So what we are going to do is, let me go back to 3D. Actually, you can almost sort of see it right there. Let me see if I can actually just make it happen here without having to put it back in here. What I want to do is basically align the reference line that goes right here with that reference line right there. Okay, so. Is it the blue one or the black one? It's this one right okay. there. Okay. Let me see if I can actually make this happen without. Just make it happen in 3D. I want that. And it's always take the thing and pull me to you. So it's that. I'm not going to be able to get to it just in this level. Okay, so no worries. Let's come back over here. It's on the other reference plane. I'm going to take it back out again. But what I'm going to do is go back in and say component again. I will pick a reference plane, and I want it to be on that plane. So now it is on that plane. Now. It's still not lined up the way we want it to be, but it is attached to that plane. So if I go back and rotate it, let me move it first. It's on the plane, so I know it'll work. You want to be there, and I want your nose Be not here, but on that plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can make this rotate with it. Okay, 10 degrees. Was that plane created when you drew the line, or when was it? Yes, it came as part of the line. Okay. So now, 
Not too bad. Okay, let's save that away. I'll make a form and we'll take a break. Because that's actually, that's really groovy. That worked, that, honestly, that worked out smoother than I thought it would. Because often when I go through and do these, uh, rotating is one of the hardest things to sort of get to work right. But the key is, get the line down. Get the line anchored to wherever you want to. Then figure out what the plane is of the line and attach the moving profile to that plane, not to the orthogonal planes. And then you should be in good shape. Okay, let's go back over here. We'll take these two different things. Say, let's make a form out of that. Okay, and with any luck now, as we go rotating that around, up to some oh. point. Isn't that nice? Okay, it, yeah. it'll get to a point where it'll break. You know, somewhere around 90 degrees, I think it might start having some problems. That's what Scotty said. I can't do it, kid. I don't have the power. Okay, so let's go ahead and break now. Let's just test it. Anyone want to guess where it's going to break? You guess 90, or are you going to guess one? What do you think? I think, I, think, I think it might go all the way to 179. Okay. Really? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to try 90. Oh, 90's not too bad. Okay. 135. 135. Oh, but that's broken. No, I think no, no, no. it's going to be an error. 179. Go 179. Yeah, yeah. This time. Just too early. Oh, yeah, no, that's viable. That's razor sharp, but okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Such drama. Okay. 179. No, it's not. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, oh. It's and 180 even? No. Now, you, you can see where the problem's going to be. See where it's going <laughs> yeah, right to It'll twist off right there. <laughs> it'll snap its neck. <laughs> okay. go, take, go take your break. Come back in five, and we will uh, put our Starfleet Tower to use.